Having opposable thumbs is one of the key traits of being human, and while being an evolutionary adaptation originally being used for arboreal locomotion, it is now key to our societies and how we function, allowing us to better manipulate tools and objects to achieve things that would otherwise be impossible without them. Thumbs aren't just found in humans though, as many other mammals, reptiles and even amphibians also possess them, although to a lesser extent in the latter two groups showing how key the adaptation is to a shared niche and that it has evolved multiple times in unrelated animal groups. A new discovery from China further emphasises the range of organisms that this trait can be exhibited in, and in a group that over the years has proven that that's they even more diverse and marvellous than they already were previously, this group being the pterosaurs. With a range of differing body plans, diets and sizes, they have captured the imagination of people interested in the sciences for many years, and while once being considered to be evolutionary stepping stones for birds to take over, are now being recognised as the successful, perfectly adapted and varied animals that they are now known to be. And the discovery that will be discussed in this video is further proof of that. The animal in question were members of the Darwinopterans, a subgroup of pterosaurs unique for their combination of basal and derived pterodactyloid traits, named after Charles Darwin due to their unique transitional anatomy that has revealed how evolution affected the anatomy of pterosaurs throughout time, as well as the family Wukongopteridae, which are found in China and the UK, all dating to the middle to late Jurassic. To give some additional information as to their place in pterosaur phylogeny and why they are so notable, it is down to the already mentioned statements of them being characterised by both quote-unquote primitive and advanced pterosaurian features. While they have the long tails, general build and other characteristics of more basal pterosaurs, they also have features quite derived from others from around the same time, such as having long vertebrae in their necks and a single skull opening in front of their eyes, known as the nasal and orbital fenestra, with most other basal pterosaurs having two openings the nasal opening and the antorbital fenestra. This allows for their skulls to be increasingly light, and this feature would later be commonly seen in Asdarkids and other pterodactyloid-grade pterosaurs, making Darwinopterans quite the derived group from the time they were around, and that these traits, generally only thought to be found in more recent pterosaurs, can also be found in groups far older. The new pterosaur described belongs to the genus Kungpengopterus, a genus named in 2010, which combines the words kun, a large fish or whale from Chinese folklore, that could also transform into the peng, a large colourful bird which is said to be an explanation of the northern lights, and a Latinized Greek pteron meaning wing. Up until this discovery, the genus was represented by one species being K. sinensis, with the holotype and subsequent fossils being largely complete. The genus is known from the rocks of the Tao Jishan Formation in western Liaoning, dating to around 161 to 158 million years ago, having wingspans of around 85 centimetres. A new species of the genus, named K. antipolycartus, was described as being different enough from the other species in the genus, down to a truly unusual feature never before seen in the group, and one recorded far earlier than previously known of before their description. This has garnered the species the nickname title of monkey dactyl due to this trait for a good reason, with the discovery not only being the oldest record of a true opposed thumb in the fossil record, but also being unusual in being found in a reptile group, which is incredibly rare for non-mammal vertebrates and especially in extinct reptiles like pterosaurs of which this is the first known case. The species name comes from the ancient Greek word for opposites, anti and pollux meaning thumb, referring to their opposed first finger. The specimen that's enabled for the new species to be classified is well preserved due to the formation's excellent preservation down to volcanic ash, with only the back of the skull not being well preserved. The thumb and fingers of the species are small and partly embedded in the slab, requiring micro-CT scanning to better see through the rocks entombing the fossil and then creating digital models to see how the thumb articulates with the other finger bones, to better assess their use. Varying degrees of polex orientation exist in tetrapods, which has led to the proposition of classification systems to examine said variation. Non-opposable polices are those where the orientation of the polex is similar to the other digits, which is common for most tetrapods. True opposed polices are those where the opposition is palma, referring to the palm of the hand, with that side of the thumb facing the palmar side of the other digits, with some degree of complex motion. In contrast, a pollux that is medially offset but is not fully opposed, thus facing the lateral side of the other digits, 
has been termed as pseudo-opposed and or laterally opposed. Offset but not truly opposed thumbs, as mentioned, can be found in the Amnodon synapsid Suminia and in the base of Dinosauria, as has been documented in many early genera and several theropods. On the other hand, true Apama opposition of the pollux is a sophisticated adaptation that is typically associated with arboreal[ism], as it assists in grasping branches and other objects while climbing, something key in such a diverse and fragile environment. It is mostly restricted to mammals such as primates other than some tree frogs, being absent in living reptiles, although something similar occurs in chameleons and the now extinct trypanosaurs due to their zygodactyl like condition. In primates, opposition of the pollux is achieved by movement through the rotation of the first carpometacarpal joint. In K. antipolycarsis, however, there is no indication of this mobility, with its osteological configuration being similar to that observed in the avian reverse talux, indicating that while they could form a fist for grasping, the whole structure wouldn't have been all that flexible. The possession of such a fallen plan in this case though is evident for an arboreal existence and shows an adaptation for an advanced climbing ability, with something on this level being unseen before in any reptile group. Darwinopterans as a whole had already been tentatively viewed as arboreal due to their elongated claws and the presence of antungual sesamoids, however this evidence is rather ambiguous. Elongated and curved claws can variously relate to predatorial, scansorial or arboreal habits, and antungual sesamoids related to the hyperextension of the digits and not flexion and or grasping, and may have been a mechanical response to walking on hard substrates, whether terrestrial or arboreal, or an adaptation to claw retraction. Therefore, to test the idea that the group as a whole, including Kung Pungopterus, were arboreal, the study included 25 other pterosaur species within a morphometric dataset with 156 other amniote species. They analysed metrics, 17 in total, including the limb proportions, limb mobility and claw curvature, with the study finding that both Kung Pungopterus species were placed in the intersection between the arboreal and scansorial quadrupeds. Particularly, they cluster nearest to the arboreal taxa, being tree kangaroos, three-toed sloths, anoles and gliding lizards. In contrast, the other two Darwinopterans assessed, Darwinopterus and Wukongopterus, nested comfortably within scansorial mammals, plotting closest to wolverines, animals that while inhabiting trees often, are not as fully adapted for the niche as the animals previously mentioned. All of the Chinese Wukongopterids, Kangpengopterus, Wukongopterus and Darwinopterus, come from the same locality, the Linglong to Strata, and despite the lack of finer details on the stratigraphic position of each taxon, an important problem regarding some pterosaurs, the strata itself does not cover more than 3 million years, meaning that the temporal coexistence of these three taxa is likely. This therefore suggests that there was some niche partitioning occurring among them, as further suggested by their inferred ecomorphological disparities. With them each inhabiting different microhabitats, with Kung Pengopterus, for example, being more situated in the canopy. Based on their tooth anatomy, Darwinopterans as a whole were likely insectivorous, although evidence in the form of distinct tooth morphologies may indicate the preference of larger prey in some taxa, further favouring a scenario of niche partitioning. The environment in which Kung Pengopterus lives, the Taoji Shan Formation, is interpreted as a subtropical forest with the canopy being dominated by benetitalians and conifers, with ferns, cycads and equesitids also being present in large numbers. Wood growth rings also indicate that the forests were warm, humid but also seasonal, with Kung Pengopterus also showing its environment, with gliding mammals like Velasicotherium, dinosaurs like Yi and Shao Tingjia, showing that this environment was a highly diverse one that supported a wide range of animals in just the trees alone. Kung Pengopterus is also notable for being a taxa that is also relevant to pterosaur reproduction through a female specimen now assigned to this new species that is preserved as gravids with two eggs, indicative that they had two functional oviducts and shows that the reduction of one oviduct was not a prerequisite for developing powered flight, at least in this group. Histological sections on one femur lacked medullary bone, which in birds forms on the endosteel surface of the bone cavity prior to and during egg laying to serve as a calcium reservoir for building their eggshells, and also demonstrates that this taxa in particular reached reproductive maturity before sexual maturity, also showing that they laid eggs smaller than previously thought, and having a reproductive strategy more similar to basal reptiles than to birds. 
Also, to clear up any doubts of whether or not the thumbs in these pterosaurs were illegitimate or a result of taphonomic digit flipping, as has been suggested, it is interesting to note that both of the hands are preserved in the same way, both in this specimen and the other attributed to the species, clearing up this idea. With this discovery, pterosaurs, and in particular Darwinopterans, continue to provide unexpected and invaluable information on the evolutionary history of pterosaurs and now also on the history of arboreal communities. This unique clade seems to have experienced an evolutionary trajectory richer than initially thought, and are much more than just an evolutionary step towards more advanced pterodactyloids. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.